Gita Njali Kolanad. Gita is uh, locked down in Toronto. I am locked down in the UK. How are you doing, Gita? <laughs> I'm, I'm doing great. I, I like lockdown. So you are um, uh, an academic, a novelist, a dancer, and a practitioner of, of Kalari Payat, the, the Kerelan um, martial art. And we met a few years ago, a couple of years ago, or a few, a couple or a few years ago, and you came to the martial arts study conference in Cardiff, and you talked about um, Indian dancing uh, and, and Kalari Payat. And, um, and I just wanted to talk to you today about this this whole nexus of, of 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 issues around that, but also, I mean, there's a very sad um, occurrence, isn't there, that our esteemed friend and uh, Kalari Payat um, uh, teacher died recently, Philip Zarilli. You knew him quite well, didn't you? Yeah, I, I've known him for. We were calculating for 26 years, so hmm. uh, I'd met him in Brisbane. Um, that long ago and we did work together on a couple of very for me very important pieces that uh, um, were quite definitive of the, of the kind of performance I used to do so it was very sad for me we were supposed to work together again mm -hmm. and uh, that that project was supposed to start in May but had to be cancelled because of Philip's illness and then coronavirus, I mean, the two things came together so um, that I couldn't even come to see him before he died. Hmm. So the, 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 um, the kind of performances you did would combine um, Carolyn martial arts and dance, or would, would there be more to it than that? Oh, well, <clears throat> you know, the, the initial connection that Philip and I felt was I suppose that we both did Kalari Payet 26 years ago when it wasn't very well known, even in India. You had to go to Kerala if you wanted to learn it. And uh, so that, that became an immediate point of connection for us. Um, uh, and, but then the way Philip used Kalari Payet was as a, a technique for having presence on stage, something like uh, a way to bring your faculties into um, usefulness mm -hmm. when you were on stage, when that, when that wasn't always um, uh, to be taken for granted. And certainly as a dancer, it had never occurred to me that this was these. This was how it could be used. I just used it as a kind of um, training for dance technique. You know, this it would is, help me with my. Is music. that how you um, encountered Kalari Payat? Was it? Was it? Were you a dancer first, and then? You... Yes. Yes. So tell us about that. Yeah. So I was studying a, a style in India called um, Bharatanatyam. And uh, um, I was, it's, it's very, it has a lot of stamping. You do it in a kind of a, a plie position. It puts a lot of strain on your back and on your knees. And I was having serious knee problems. Mm -hmm. And somebody suggested that what I try is the Kalari Payet massage. The, so there's a, a whole bunch of healing techniques along with Kalari Payet. And so I, um, I went to the um, master in Kerala mm -hmm. and he did. He gave me the, the Kalari Payet massage, which is done over 14 days, every day for 14 days. Mm -hmm. And it did fix my knee problems. And my knee problems had been so severe at that point that the doctor, the Western doctor said, uh, you know, this is something I should expect, a kind of osteoporosis, kind of uh, wear and tear on my knee socket that, that couldn't really be avoided. But uh, the Kalari Payet massage did offer a great deal of relief. And so I just started going. Mm -hmm. um, every year from then on, you were supposed to have the treatment once a year. Mm -hmm. And so I just kept going. And uh, also 
found that it that the practice of Kalani Payet was uh, extremely helpful as well. The position, the the body positions use mm. seem to offer some relief from the Bharatanatyam body positions. And, this, and sorry. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say, is that the massage where they principally are d doing it with the feet? And, and is that the hanging, or is it a different kind of massage? No, no, it's, it's that one. They have a lot of different treatments, and they do offer, um, like when I was there, there was a woman who had, who had her frozen shoulder, and she had also was there for some massage treatments. And she wasn't having the foot massage. She was having some kind of um, other type of massage. I didn't really know anything about it mm -hmm. at the time, but I had the foot massage. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, they judge you as being able to take the foot massage if you're in good health and if you're okay. strong. And they just figured that as a dancer, I would, I would be able to to take it and it is it's quite intense but um uh <laughs> yeah it's, it's something quite different from what what you expect when you okay. have a massage from that, from like that it's not started, a nice calming relaxing kind of massage and from that you it's, started to um, practice kalari payat as well you start practicing. yes okay yes and did you train in the uh, well i mean yes uh, the, the two the two things had come together. I had my knee problems, but also there were other uh, people using Kalari Payet as part of um, uh, actor training technique. So I had seen a play by Kavalan Narayana Panikar, which is why I even knew what Kalari Payet was or how to look for it, is because I'd seen um, a play of his in Delhi in which the actors were trained using Kalari Payet. And the next day, um, after the play was presented, they had a workshop. And uh, it was in Delhi, and as, uh, you know, 30, more than 30 years ago. And um, the, the person who, was, who had written the play and directed the play, um, he he had he was giving the workshop and uh, I was the only person who turned up for that workshop and uh, it was about Kaladi Payet how he used Kaladi Payet as a training technique for his actors and, and that's how I first found out that it exists and once I I got, then I started hearing about it hearing about the massage technique and I should have known earlier because Kathakali, the dance form, uh, also uses Kaladi Payet as part of their training technique and the massage is given to young dancers when they're learning. But um, I don't know, it had just never really entered my consciousness as being something separate from Kathakali uh, and something that I might want to try myself. And uh, so then I started learning Kaladi Payet and by going to Kerala and um, um, having the massage and all that kind of came together. So it's, it's not like uh, the usages of Kaladi Payet for actor training were entirely um, um, Philip's doing, mm -hmm. but uh, Kavala Narayana Panikar was doing it it was already embedded in Kathakali as part of the mm. actor training for young Kathakali artists. And so uh, I guess Philip was developing it in a form that was very um, interesting for people like me. So by the time I had met Philip, I'd been doing Kalari Payet for a while. I knew that it was available to actors as an actor training technique but i'd just been doing it as a martial art and it didn't really occur to me that it had a use for me as a dancer in that mode okay and as a as a writer you have um often and you've been kind of interested in the question of how you can express 
in writing in, in spoken language the kinds of things that that are taking place in the body or what the body can do I mean is that is where, where are you with with working out that kind of that well-worn problem of like how do you express in words embodied skill knowledge feeling and, and things like that yeah, I mean, it seemed to me that it was really, when I was a dancer, I really thought that I don't even want to go near the problem, that that's somebody else's problem. It's not my problem as a dancer, and that as a dancer, all I need to do is dance. And uh, all kinds of theoretical considerations are just not my concern. Mm -hmm. But when... Um, when academics started writing about Bharatanatyam, or I saw academic writing about Bharatanatyam, and it felt so wrong to me. It felt like they were getting something essentially wrong. Mm -hmm. And um, I could perhaps bring some kind of, well, it made me angry enough. Some of the wrong things seemed, it made me angry enough that I thought, Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna write. I'm gonna try to write about it too. I mean, uh, I, I, I remember it quite vividly because it was uh, uh, two performances that I could see that one was really amazingly good and one was really amazingly bad. But in the critique about it the next day these two were held up on the same level and it just seemed like, oh, this is infuriating. I can't let this go. And uh, so I started writing about Indian dance first. And then, uh, you know, all the kinds of wrong things that people say about Indian dance, a similar kind of thing happened. I mean, it, it seems um, crazy to me that uh, um, Philip's book is still really kind of the only academic book about Kaveri Payet that you can really access that has um, um, a, a rigorous foundation to it. In um, Malayalam, most of the texts are simply kind of like instruction manuals or mm -hmm. descriptive mm -hmm. and kind of uh, propagate the same uh, abiding mythologies about Kaladi Payet mm -hmm. that it's it's very old, for example. And, and this is part two of the conversation <laughs> with Peter Kolanad. I'm really sorry. Um, every day, my internet provider seems to just like introduce a 15 minutes of, of fun where. The internet just drops out, so <laughs> so fingers crossed, <laughs> fingers crossed. So oh, I'm sorry, Gita. So we were just talking about um, what were we talking about? Oh, we were talking about embodiment. We were talking about um, yes, about the the way in which. So you were kind of wanting to correct a lot of misconceptions about 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 uh, Kalari Payat and and Carol, and Indian dance. Uh, in in the written form, so yeah. you, you you wanted part of your project is to bring a kind of um, intellectual articulate um, literacy in, into writing about Kalari Payat. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, you know, when when uh, uh, unless I read Philip's book twenty odd years ago, I think it's it's more like. Um, 25 years since he wrote his book. Um, if I wanted to read anything then, it was all just descriptive instruction manuals. This is how you do Nedkal, this is how you do, or, or this is what comes next, and this is what comes next, with even very little description of how you do it, because it was presumed that you'd go to the Kalari and that you already knew basic positions and everything mm -hmm. and there was all this this idea that um it was the oldest of all martial arts and things like that and mm -hmm. and in Bharatanatyam we were coming to terms with the fact that it was an invented tradition 
and uh, in, in the way in which yoga and Tai Chi and all those kinds of uh, art forms, people are showing how they are, um, you know, a, a, a generation, basically. They, they exist within bodies, and therefore, what you, can, what you have to look at is the generation ahead of you, basically. And um, now that we have video, maybe it's a bit different, but certainly at that time we didn't even have access to to many recordings of the art forms. Mm -hmm. And um, so uh, trying to get across something of that's that's not trivial about a martial art form and about an embodied form was. It, it was really great to have Philip's example of somebody who was both a practitioner and a writer about the art form. So I started, uh, I was very, very, very inspired by that, that it could be done, that it could be done well. Now, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm very in, interested in, in Ben's um, uh, approach which is that you could do a video essay and I, I really have suggested it already to students of mine like Gautam and uh, that but it wasn't an option that was open to me at the time and therefore my thinking uh, naturally went towards writing about um, the, the form writing something that was worth saying okay. and uh yeah it, it, it's still a struggle it's still not um not easy to be accurate mm -hmm. and still have something to say and that it be um non-fiction mm -hmm. you know it's not one of these mythologies about the form that so you... that build up so quickly do you know much about the the process of the kind of reinvention of Kalari Payat? Uh, because I mean, it's a it's a huge, hugely popular myth that it is the the granddaddy of all martial arts, and and that it you know in that kind of simple origin narrative of uh, Indian monks <laughs> brings Kalari to China. Yeah. Um, it's really yeah. people love that stuff. I mean, I mean, do, do you yeah. have any uh, insights into the that you want to share into the kind of reinvention of it for uh, modern reasons? Well, you know, the the same the invention happened in my dance form, Bharatanatyam, and around the same time, the invention happened in Kaleri Payak with a very um, a charismatic figure. The the you you very often see pictures of him in the Kaleri, and he's in 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 a um, a nice pose and everything. And he was the person. He was a, a charismatic figure who uh, went to who kind of straddles the old. Uh, master and was able to uh, kind of construct a narrative for it mm -hmm. that fit with that time which was Indian independence it was around the time of Indian independence so many of the same um, uh, aspects that were true of other art forms that India wanted to have its own art forms that we didn't want just to be um, talking about Western things. Mm. And um, that uh, so very similar narratives were constructed around Kaleri Payet mm -hmm. as were constructed around um, uh, Bharatanatyam. And in order to bring it into prominence around the 1940s, 1930s and 1940s, Mm -hmm. and, and that it was, but when I went back to my teachers to to kind of uh, look at what what they said about it and what uh, I knew to be true, 
it, it was it was really hard. I mean, it was it was uh, obvious to me that a kind of mythologic mythologizing was necessary at a certain point in the history of the art form. That it wouldn't have taken on the the it wouldn't have gotten the students. It wouldn't have taken on the aura mm -hmm. that it did. It was necessary for its propagation. And uh, what you can say about it factually is, is that there was this guy, he was a CBN. And that's why many of the, the colors are called CBN colors. They kind of go back to his understanding of what color he played was. Mm -hmm. And you can tell that he was in the way of, of people in that generation. He wasn't really concerned with authenticity. That, you know, this is exactly the way it was taught to me. Yes. He was willing to, uh, for example, put fencing moves into the dagger sequence, moves that came directly from a fencing tradition rather than from the Kaleri Payet tradition. And you'll see that um, that that move is there in the dagger sequence of Kaleri Payet. And uh, uh, that CDN had a brief fling with fencing. And so, you know, this, the, the way the, the, the tradition was invented was not with our present day obsession with authenticity. This is how it should be. This is how it was taught to me. This is how it exactly has to change. But that, um, mythology of it, of it having been the mother of all martial arts served a purpose at one point. And um, so we can't just dismiss these as, as, um, as fictions. Yeah. They, <laughs> they're perhaps necessary fictions. And then the same as with my style, Bharatanatyam, it was necessary for it to survive at a certain point, to have the fiction associated with it. And, um, and, and so, um, you know, in my master's um, uh, art form, uh, he's been practicing his, his father, so it's a three generations. His father, him, and his son are all Kaladi practitioners, but that, that it's only his grandfather and not like going back generations and generations in his lineage. And uh, he doesn't like that to be, to be widely known. And he got very, very upset with his daughter-in-law when she put it on their website that, mm. oh, you know, it was his grandfather. His grandfather learned it when he was a young man from this person that CBN had kind of brought into prominence and uh, he studied it. And under most circumstances, you think, oh, well, you know, that's, that's just how I learned it. But now that, that's, that part of his history, he kind of keeps it a little bit suppressed. Mm -hmm. He'd like to, it to be thought that he was, you know, generations of his family were practitioners so, of Kalei Payet. So if, I mean, that you've got, um you understand the complexity of, of, of lineage and tradition and ideology and myth and in constructing what you just used the word aura. But when, when you were in um, Cardiff uh, a couple of years ago and you did your talk, I mean, the, que the question that I asked you, uh, because, because you, yeah. you argued that you, you, if you've just seen Kalari Payat on YouTube, you haven't seen Kalari Payat, and and I think you were evoking the the, the rich, the necessary, sensuous uh, phenomenological experience of of being somewhere, like in a place, in a culture, mm -hmm. in a time, in a context, um, before you can really experience it. But I, you're saying that that's all just a sort of a complex construct rather than an rather than an essence of any kind? I mean, what can you say more about that? Like what you meant when you say, if you've just seen it on YouTube, you haven't seen it. Can okay, <laughs> well, I, I probably come to change my mind about video at, that, at this point. I mean, especially after listening to Ben's talk about it and understanding that my 
uh, way way of approaching the screen is very different from a present day generation's way of approaching the screen. I mean, so many people have come to me during the lockdown to say, can I teach a Kaladi Payet class online? Mm -hmm. And it, I know that it's something that I'm simply not capable of doing, but it doesn't mean that it's not happening. People mm -hmm. are teaching Kaladi Payet online and it's, it's, um, it, it, I guess it's just my way of understanding how embodiment is a process that happens over time with bodies and what my body is capable of understanding by looking at a video is not what um, other bodies are, are and a, a, a body that's been brought up having looked at screens from the time they were uh, very very small yeah. look at screens differently than I do and and it it puts a barrier that's a barrier for me that isn't a barrier for my young students they don't see it the same way they don't respond to it the same way and of course coming to that realization coming to the realization that my experience of seeing things through a screen is not a universal uh, way uh, it, it, it's it's really happened over the over the last few years as people um, interact through the screen more and more. I've realized, okay, I'm not uh, I'm not the I'm not the final expression of this. At the same time, uh, every person who takes up Kaleri Payet and then goes to the Kaleri in Kerala. And practices there finds that their understanding of Kaladi is not it, it, it is deepened by the experience of being there. At the same time, not everybody can go there, and and now this is going to become a reality that you can't just get on a plane and go off to Kerala to study Kaladi Payet. Mm. You know, COVID nineteen realities mean that that uh, maybe people are going to try to find other ways to um, respond to embodied practice that don't involve bodies being in the same space together. So what have you um, seen of the, of the globalization or internationalization of Kalari Payet? I mean, is it, is it something that do, do you see schools and classes everywhere you've been or is it still something that maybe it's only in a few metropolises or outside of India? I mean, how much do you, are you aware of Kalari Paya dispersing around, around the world? Yeah, I do. I do see um, quite, I mean, a lot has happened within the last um, um, 30 years that I've been involved with Kaladi Payet. Um, so uh, London, Paris uh, have long standing centers of Kaladi Payet practice. And there's a, a class, there are a couple of classes in Paris, there are a couple of classes in London that have been going on for, for 10 years, I mean, uh, more than 10 years. I don't even want to say how long they've been going on. They've been going on for long enough that there, there are um, students who've practiced only there, that mm. they've been able to um, mm. have their practice. Phillips Kaleri in, in uh, um, Tiny Park, that, that's been going on for quite a long time too. I can't remember how long he's been in, in Wales, but it's, mm -hmm. um, his intensive has been going on for close to 20 years, um, if not more than 20 years. That's, mm -hmm. it, it's been um, happening there. Uh, the, and there are people who are doing it in Japan. And, uh, I see them when they come to um, Kerala. I meet Japanese practitioners of Kaladi Payet, German, Austrian, Swiss, mm. um, quite a few Americans. And they're, 
the qualities that have become popular have um, do get so many for like Sharif Gurkal's Kalari in Kerala. He has a separate um, practice period and a separate Kalari, as I understand, for his um, students from Europe. So you get, and, so we uh, get, um, you, there is a definite kind of, um, kind of um, pilgrimage, tourism pilgrimage, like people will go, I'm, I'm yeah. going, this summer I'm going for two months, three months to Kerala, the same way that people want to go to the Shaolin Temple, or they want to go to Brazil to learn capoeira. It's got that kind of gravitas, that kind of magnetism to get the, is that, yeah. is that, is that because of the authentic masters or because of the they want the culture or is what do you think is it expertise or is it is it broader than that well i have to say from my own experience that it's broader than that i mean there is there is something very um uh, uh, hard to replace with the practice in the Kalari, because in Kalari Payet, the place of practice and the form itself are considered to be united. You know, that Kalari, the Kalari is the word for the, for the space. It's not the word for the form, it's the, the Payet, it's the thing that you do in the Kalari. And so that uh, mud floor, that kind of sweaty Kerala climate hmm. and practicing with your guru in that in that space hmm. is is very different than doing it in a gym or in a in a with a wood floor and in uh, with the fan and the air conditioning and whatnot. It's a very very different kind of experience. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna share a screen. I'm not gonna share that screen. I'm gonna share first of all. Uh, so you've got stuff all over the internet, haven't you? There's there's we've got the video of your keynote that you gave um, at our conference, and then you do have um, films on on Kalari Payat and all sorts of things, all sorts of things um, yeah. about you on 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 YouTube, haven't you? I mean, do do you, are you turning more to YouTube now? Or is this just, it's not a deliberate choice of yours? It's just, it's just other people film you more now? Or, or, or <laughs> yeah. what's your relationship yeah, so with that? Far, I, Paul, I think it's other people putting it up because it's <laughs> none, of, none of it is what I have done. Okay. And during the time that this lockdown has been going on, people have been teaching Kalari Payet online, but not me. I haven't been able to get my head around it. And as I said, I think it's just the way that my embodiment has has worked out and um, a new generation isn't going to find it a problem. But uh, I think the the only the only things that I've put online, which I don't know how to share with you at all, is choreography that I've done using Kaleri Payet as as the, that vocabulary as the form for um, uh, dance like choreography, which I, I think it really lends itself to. Like my first uh, master, Benoit, uh, he worked with this guy Zingaro, who was a choreographer in, in Paris, mm -hmm. and uh, he created um, uh, a piece called Triptych using, using uh, Kalari Payet that was. Um, so, and, and um, Philip and I, when we work together, we definitely use the Kaladi Payet vocabulary. Mm -hmm. So if I were ever to put anything online or if, I, if any of the stuff that uh, is online comes from me, it's that, it's choreography where I use Kaladi Payet as the, yeah. as the vocabulary. And um, I, I do think it has... Yeah, it uh, has um, a, a a lot of uh, potential in that way, and a lot of people are using it like that. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, 
Sorry, I'm just sharing this other screen on, and is that distracting you? I was, I was looking, <laughs> I'm looking at some of the, some of your books. I mean, you've had a, yeah. a a diverse and kind of controversial career, haven't you? In terms of, I mean, you got you got a kind of infamy from this book, didn't you? This sleeping with movie stars book. Can you do you want to tell us this, something a little bit about the sleeping with movie stars book? <laughs> well, so <clears throat> when I stopped dancing, which in my in my 50s because um, I, I realized that I, I couldn't keep dancing unless I spent at least four or five hours of, of conditioning practice every day. And I just decided I'm just not doing it anymore. I can't do it. Mm -hmm. I, I don't have the physical resources to do it. I started writing and uh, Sleeping With Movie Stars is a collection of short stories based on learning this Bharatanatyam style and performing Bharatanatyam. So it was, it was an attempt to use the resources and the, um, the, the mode of interacting with my own uh, physical practice mm -hmm. and try to, um, to write about the, the experience of being a dancer. I, I just think it's one of the things that isn't that well written about or isn't even written about very much mm -hmm. um be, being a writer writers are constantly that the the protagonists of stories are very often writers and writers do it themselves and mm -hmm. painters and musicians are kind of um also um very often characters in novels and short stories Stories, but dancers very rarely are and I just really wanted to write about the experience of, of uh, being a dancer what is it like and, and what does it do to you and especially of the form Bharatanatyam it has a rich literary tradition so it seemed kind of natural to to go into writing about it so what I am working on a book, uh, Paul. I'm working on a book about dance, dance in India, oh. and uh, uh, even finding a definition for dance that that for me includes um, practices that are physical, like capoeira and kalari payak, that kind of um, are on the edge. Finding a definition that would include would allow me to include some of these other physical practices. So is and, this a literary uh, look, or is this, a, is this literary or is it scholarly or is it a kind of crossover of different genres? I, I'm hoping it'll be a little bit of a crossover because it's nonfiction, definitely. Like it's a, it, but I, it's not an academic book. Mm -hmm. it, it's, um, but the the publishers would like it to be a resource about indian dance for the non academic reader i suppose not just for scholars but for people who want to understand what's going on with indian dance and that's written not from that perspective of oh yeah i believe that it's a 2000 year old form it's it comes from the Natya Shastra, the kind of mythology that's been built about Indian dance forms. I do want to dispel some of that, but in a way that that the lay reader will find interesting, I suppose. Okay, and is that does that have a publication date, or do you have a, a deadline? Yeah, next, next, it's supposed to be with the publisher by the end of this year, so I'm okay. working on it right. Will it be? And uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I do try to to yeah. live up to my deadlines, but I was supposed to be in India doing research. I was supposed to be traveling around looking at different forms, and I don't know when I'll be able to do that, or if I'll be able to do that. You know, this is um, this is the the more important question. Hasn't Kerala been a remarkable success story in terms of? of controlling the uh, coronavirus. I mean, I read the news yesterday, but it, they just like, they just anticipated it, they just locked down, they just went, well, what, are the, what should we do? And they just did that. 
I know, yeah. I, you know, my, my friend Brandy, who's uh, the, a dancer that I've worked with, who does Kalaripayet, and who's, who takes part in my choreography, uh, choreographic work a lot. Mm -hmm. um, um, she's there, and she just decided to stay there, so she stayed in the Kalari. So when um, uh, the lockdown was starting, she just said, no, I'm not coming back, because she felt so um, safe, and it turns out that she's much less likely to get Kalari Payet where she is than yeah. in Toronto even. Yeah. The, the number of cases has been remarkably low. I can't, uh, uh, it, it's, it's kind of amazing what they've done in Kerala. They just did it right. They just the the the, yeah. the, the, the yeah. governors listened to the scientists and they said, "Okay, then we'll put we'll put these protection <laughs> measures in place," and it and it worked. So, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I mean, maybe maybe you could uh, maybe you could get there this year. Maybe there'll be quarantine measures and so on. But hopefully, you could get there, right? Yeah, but, but you know, when you talk about something like dance in India, there, there, or you know, any any kind of it's it's just from all the way from Manipuri in the northeast and uh, the martial art associated with that tanta and how the two interact. It's really interesting. I'd love to go to Manipur and figure that out. And the same with the dance forms that are part of ritual traditions in North Himachal and w which have had a huge Tibetan influence. And then all the, the variety of Indian uh, dance forms that are hardly even spoken about. It, it just, um, uh, <laughs> I feel really sad. I was supposed yeah. to be there in, in uh, uh, at this time and, yeah. uh, well um i mean i think we all feel a bit like that about the future don't we and about places we were hoping to be and hoping to go and yeah all we can do is is just hope that we that that we can move again i mean you know metaphorically yeah. and literally and um in all the different senses but i'm gonna say I, 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 my, the internet's getting a bit glitchy again so i think i'm gonna i think we should quit while we're ahead and i'll okay. say um gita thank you so much it's been lovely to see you albeit only only virtually as opposed to we were hoping to meet again in in at the conference in in marseille this summer but that isn't gonna yeah. happen, so but there will be a, there will be a yeah. future. There will be other conferences, and there will be yeah. Kalat and Payat, yeah. and there will be dance, and there. <laughs> so, yeah. so, Gita, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, Paul.